In this guide, I'm going to show a mathematical equation that can be used to determine the winner of a rock, paper, scissors game. I'm going to be talking about this in general programming terms, in other words, not specific to any one particular language. But if you follow the notes that accompany this video, I do have final code solutions available in JavaScript, PHP, and Python. So jumping in, we can first observe that, of course, the most straightforward way to solve the logic of rock, paper, scissors is just to manually code out the different moves. And you can see I've set this up in this example if else construct where I first check for a tie and then next I check for all the possible outcomes in which player A would be the winner. And then if it's not a tie and player A is not the winner, then we have a default else down here where player B is the winner. That works, but it's not very fun, right? The point of this is to strengthen and uh, practice our coding skills. So I want to address this with a mathematical equation. And what I want to do is I want to assign rock, paper, scissors a numerical value and then take those values, crunch the numbers, and determine the winner. Now, if things were easy, there would be a simple correlation between these numbers and uh, essentially where they rank. Um, and there sort of is. If we look at it in reverse order, with uh, scissors being three and having the highest number, well, scissors beats paper, right, because it cuts paper, and three is greater than two. Likewise, paper at two is going to defeat rock at one because paper covers rock. So if we look at it in this reverse order, it's a pretty simple equation. The problem is it doesn't work in all scenarios. For example, let's say we have rock going against scissors. Well, rock defeats scissors because rock breaks scissors. And as we can see, rock at one is actually less than scissors. So this idea of the greater number winning, that doesn't hold up in all cases. So knowing this, we have to identify some other pattern that we can translate into a mathematical equation. Uh, and the pattern we can use, or a pattern, is this one I've outlined here. In this diagram, we can see a cyclical relationship where as long as we're looking at the moves in this clockwise direction, we're going to establish a pattern where every move to the right defeats the previous move. For example, if we start at rock and we move clockwise to scissors, well, rock beats scissors. If we continue in the clockwise direction, we have scissors and paper, and scissors beats paper. And then again, going in the clockwise direction back to the beginning, paper beats rock. Now, if we look closely at the numerical values we've given the moves, we could see that this diagram actually captures what we were talking about a moment ago. Recall that we had established that if rock is one and paper is two and scissors is three, if we lay it out in numerical order, there is the pattern where rock is defeated by paper at a higher number and paper is defeated by scissors at a higher number. That pattern there, we can see in this diagram, we just have to follow it in the counterclockwise direction. Right, so here's rock at one, it's defeated by paper at two, which is then defeated by scissors at three. Now that edge case we encountered where uh, scissors at three is defeated by rock at one, the smaller number, is also captured here when we loop back to the beginning if we're going in that counterclockwise direction. So now that we've identified this pattern, we need some algorithm to capture it. And that algorithm is going to look like this. Here we have a Boolean expression that if it evaluates to true, player B is going to be the winner. Uh, and the way the expression plays out is we're going to take player A's move, or the numerical equivalent of their move, we're going to add 1, and we're going to mod that by 3. And mod is represented by this percent sign. It's a mathematical operator that yields the remainder of a division operation. In other words, if you divide two numbers by one another, what is the remainder? If you've never worked with mod before, I have a few examples to help us wrap our brains around it. Uh, starting with 2 mod 3. 2 divided by 3 uh, yields a quotient of 0, because you can't evenly divide 3 into 2. So you end up with a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 2. Right, so 2 mod 3 is 2. 4 mod 3, the quotient of that is 1, because you can go 3 into 4 one time, but you're going to have a remainder of 1. 3 mod 3, that divides evenly, so you have a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 0. So applying this, rewinding to our equation, Let's plug in some numbers. Let's say that player A had rock, so that's one, and player B had scissors, so that's three. So filling that in, player A at one plus one is two, and then two mod three is two. So the left side of this Boolean expression evaluates to two. The right side of the Boolean expression, player B is three, and three mod three is zero. So this Boolean expression is checking, is two equivalent to zero? And of course it's not, that's false. And because it's false, we know that player A wins because as is noted here, uh, player B only wins if this expression evaluates to true. And this checks out because of course we know that rock beats scissors. 
Let's try another example. Let's say that this time player A threw rock again, but player B threw paper. So same thing here. It'd be 1 plus 1 mod 3 yielding 2. So the left side of this Boolean expression would be 2. And then this time player B's value would be paper 2. And 2 mod 3 is 2. So now both sides of this expression are the same. So this evaluates to true. Therefore, player B wins. And that makes sense because if player B had paper, well, paper covers rock. And so on and so forth. You can plug in any of the combinations of moves and this formula will accurately tell you who the winner is. So this is a fun little exercise just to think through the math behind rock, paper, scissors. But I would actually argue that the better solution, if we were actually building this as a program, would be the solution I showed earlier with the basic, um, uh, basically manual comparing of the moves, because I think this is more intuitive. Uh, it's more human friendly if we're just looking at it. Imagine some other programmer going through our code. This is gonna make more sense where this is a lot more to wrap your brain around, and it's only slightly shorter than this previous version. Um, and I bring this up just to point out that when it comes to programming, sometimes we get too clever in our solutions and it actually obscures the meaning behind the code. So that's always something we wanna be thinking about. But for fun little exercises, of course, by all means, it's, it's interesting and entertaining to uh, think about how we can optimize our solutions.